Stop. Oh my God! Okay, it's happening. Everybody, stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, calm. everyone? What's the procedure? Stay calm. Wait, 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 wait. Hi there. I just wanted to talk about uh, my recent experience with going through a life crisis and then go over some of the causes, the signs, the solutions, or how you can survive one. So I am currently trying to enter a new field. So I do graphic design currently, but I've been trying to learn how to do UX UI design recently and there's a course that I'm taking right now and they had a questionnaire about kind of reflecting on myself and what my progress has been so far and they were asking me questions about you know what is it what excites you about this field what brings you joy and you know what was so appealing about this you know field and you know what are you most excited about and things like that and instead of just saying seeing them as cool reflective questions that I can think about briefly and move on, I started to like ruminate on them, started to have doubts about what I really want and what really brings me joy and excitement. So I started thinking like, oh my gosh, do I even like, like this field? Do I feel excited about this? Do I feel joy, you know, or is it just work to me? And if it's just work, then is it wrong that I'm trying to, you know, learn more about this? Like, should I give everything up and start pursuing my dream? You know, what am I doing? Am I doing it wrong? You know, what's going on with my life? Where am I going? And I kind of started to like freak out a little bit. Kind of became like a whole, um, crisis thing. <laughs> I think I had like a bit of a meltdown and I felt really depressed. Um, I think the day of, I thought that it would be really cool to just share that experience and talk about it because I don't think that I'm alone in experiencing something like that. Quarter life crisis in popular psychology is it's a crisis involving anxiety over the direction and quality of one's life, which is most ex commonly experienced in a period ranging from a person's early 20s up to their mid 30s. That is the definition of a quarter life crisis. And um, I think that I was definitely having one the other day. Where my thoughts went to after that was, I think I've always had a really interesting relationship with work. I want a lot out of my work. I think I want my work to be meaningful. I want to be able to channel my creative energy and just do something really fulfilling for me, something that's really meaningful for me. And that's not really how everybody sees work. I understand that. And I think a lot of people in my life, especially, you know, they see work as work and work is work, right? Work is work. You know, you do it kind of like maybe, you know, brushing your teeth, or doing your laundry. You do the work, you make money, you pay the bills and you can find joy and excitement and other things in other parts of your life. A lot of people do that. And I feel like I just want something more. I need something more out of life and out of work. And I feel like I think I see work as an extremely big part of life. I don't want to just have to put in all those hours to just pay the bills and find joy and excitement and happiness and fulfillment outside of it. And I think I've always felt that like I was really alone in doing that or feeling like that. I would sometimes bring this up to my friends and my friends would tell me to find joy outside of work or to see work as work and stuff like that and i've even like bought a book this book and i read it to like try to understand the, the history behind what work is and you know what an ideal relationship can look like i think i tend to definitely blame myself for wanting too much like why do you want too much out of life why can't you just give it up settle down do work whatever find other things outside of work and I think that's also like such an underlying question that really is a big part of who I am. I don't think that I want to really blame myself anymore for that. You know, what if I do want more out of work? What if I want more out of life? I don't think that it's a bad thing. I want to just start to accept that I was just built differently. I am born this way. I'm going to just try. I'm going to try to find that place where I feel more fulfilled from the work that I do. You know, I feel more joy or I find more happiness uh, from my work, not outside of work. You know, I want my work to be meaningful and fulfilling. I think I want to really connect with people who are also like that, um, who are trying to find better alignment in their life, because I don't think that it's that common. I think just from my own experience, a lot of people just see work as work. 
I think that's how my family sees it a lot. Like most of my friends, I think, see it that way. So, you know, but I want to like keep dreaming and I want to continue to make it happen, if that makes sense. You know, this can also change in the future, but for right now, my dream is to be able to live full time as an artist or as a creator or as a maker. And I think that I really want to do my own thing instead of fulfilling somebody else's dream, which I feel like a lot of work can be. Of course, it's a privilege to be even able to think about this stuff. I understand that. A lot of people probably will see me as being too idealistic, but I think that's okay. I think that's okay. And I just recently reborrowed the book, The Alchemist, which is about a person who follows or goes on their journey in order to fulfill their personal legend or their personal dream to make it come true. And I really get inspired by that book. And I would really like to believe that it is possible for me to do that as well. Even though I think a lot of times I hear people or things that tells me that that I am wrong for wanting more out of my life and more out of my work. So yeah, if you, if any of you guys can relate to me and what I've just shared, I would really love to connect with that, connect with you and like hear your story of why you, you still dream, why you still are trying to manifest things and why you, know, why you also want more out of your life and your work and how you feel about you know, all the messages that you hear about being too idealistic. I hope that it resonated with at least some of you. And I just wanted to talk about quarter life crisis in general, you know, maybe talk about what causes it, what the signs are, and how you can survive it. So we're going to start with the causes of a quarter life crisis. So for me, as I explained, what caused it was literally just a couple questions that I saw on a website. So it was very <laughs> weird cause. But other causes, it looks like it includes having to make uh, major life decisions in career, relationships, and stuff like that, or having questions or concerns about your work, career, relationships, or also having a lot of doubts about your overall purpose of life. So that definitely reminds me of existential crisis in general, not just the quarter life crisis. So existential crisis, I experienced it when I was in high school, just like started really intensely asking myself, what is life? Why am I here? Where am I going? What's the meaning of all this? And it was really overwhelming and difficult to go through it alone. I didn't even know the term existential crisis back then, I feel like, but I think something similar like that can also lead to a uh, quarter life crisis as well. Big life transitions, like graduating from college, getting married, having kids, you know, you start to ask what's next, you know, or well, where am I going with all of this? Some people experience a quarter life crisis after they start living alone for the first time in their lives or they start, you know, when they feel lonely. And financial instability or comparing yourself to others can also trigger a uh, quarter life crisis as well. And what are some signs of having a quarter life crisis? Feeling directionless in careers, relationships, and overall life purpose. So you start to feel really trapped in a career that you don't want, and you really crave a lot of change in your life. Or sometimes you would feel the tension between pursuing, dream, pursuing your dreams and settling down, really feeling like you have to make this decision once and for all. And it's like you, are, you either are gonna make it or you're gonna just settle and your life's gonna be meaningless and that's it. So it's just like feeling a lot of tension, even though it's not really black and white because, you know, dreams change. And just because you're not pursuing something right now, I don't think means that you will never be able to achieve your dream or anything like that, right? So it's a lot of like black and white thinking, which can be very negative. So you may also feel like there's so much to do, but you're running out of time. Other signs of uh, having a horror life crisis include depression, anxiety, fatigue, or you may also struggle to find what is missing in your life. You also lack motivation have difficulty making decisions, you feel lonely, isolated, overly impulsive, or you feel like other people are doing better and have it all figured out, which also is not true at all. I know a lot of lawyers in my life and not every one of them is happy with where they are, even though they don't really share a lot of that. I, or, you know, even other people in other fields as well. Like, not everyone has it figured out. In fact, I would say most people don't really know what they're doing. <laughs> and they're just still doing it for the same reasons that we've been also just kind of doing it without really understanding why or where where we're going and stuff. So don't assume that everyone has it figured out. So for example, like, you know, I have this dream of living as a full-time artist, full-time creator, and 
doing my own thing and I see people doing that like on Instagram or YouTube like hey guys you know I'm a full-time whatever artist here's how I made it you know and I think that I can start to really assume that they are extremely lucky first of all and they have it all figured out they you know they knew exactly what to do and I never will understand and that's not really true I think that they probably also had to go through a lot of struggles to get to where they are because it's not really easy to be a full-time artist a full-time creator like in this day and age even with social media and stuff I think that it can be really tricky a lot of artists get exploited maybe there are things in their life that they are not happy with either you know and like I just wouldn't really know until I walk in their shoes so I need to just really stop assuming that other people have it all figured out and it's really easy for them because it's probably not true and here are some tips on how to survive a quarter life crisis the first one here is start a journal and try to be mindful of your own thoughts and feelings throughout the day so mindfulness, you know, I can have a whole video on this, but mindfulness is a really beautiful tool that you can use to be in touch with your own emotions and thoughts. And mindfulness will allow you to figure out exactly when these negative thoughts pop up. Also, it will be a really great opportunity for you to explore what are some things throughout the day that make you really happy, that bring you joy? And what are some things that don't make you happy? And some things, you know, what are some things that you feel like you have to force yourself through? What are your unique gifts that you can give back to the world? And stuff like that, a lot of self-exploration. Which is my next point as well. Quarter Life Crisis is actually a really great opportunity for us to explore who we are and learn more about ourselves which you know we may assume we know a lot of ourselves but sometimes i don't think that we know what the most important things are one thing that i really recommend is using the values cards these are the values cards that i got um after my therapist recommended them to me this is what it looks like on the inside you have a little booklet telling you how to use it but it's really simple actually there's a whole process you have to go through but what you end up with is you will find out what your top three values are of your life. There are like a ton of values. You even have blank cards for the values that are missing here. Basically a lot of values that you can think about and see if they really mean a lot to you. Um, love, fairness, acceptance self-respect wealth could be a value of yours patience you know what are some things freedom freedom is a really good one right so what are some things that uh some values that really matter a lot to you you know i did it actually a couple months ago it was pretty cool i think i knew what my values were already but it was really like confirming and it was really cool it was just really helpful and i would highly recommend it to other people it could also be a really cool cool tool to use like in you know on a date i think like to find out more about uh, another person as well and what they value as well so really highly recommend it as a self-exploration tool and another tool that i would really recommend to other people and i have been recommending to other people is this book called well, what color is your parachute so this is helpful for when you want Want to change your careers or you want to find out more about like what really makes you happy what kind of a, a relationship you want to have with your work and your career etc so this is a 2019 version but it really help you end up with the flower diagram that lets you know what kind of work environments you know make you thrive what kind of values you have that are really important this was actually the one that helped me find out what my top values were before I used these cards. So it was really helpful and I kind of used it almost as a compass, figuring out like how I want to live my life. I did learn from both of these exercises that I really value truth, art slash creativity and healing. So those are my top three values. They were really helpful for me to figure out what my top values are and I think they can really guide us, you know, throughout life, not just work, but really everything in life. So I really recommend them. Another thing you could do is to ask people around you, hey, what do you think that I am good at? Or what do you see as my biggest strength? Or what am I, how am I different from other people? Just asking people around you about it, it may give you also more clarity because I think sometimes other people have a clearer vision of who we are than ourselves. That could be a really cool tool as well. 
going back to how to survive a quarter life crisis, another thing they can try is to create a plan and try new things, okay? Work a side hustle, learn a new skill, pursue a new hobby. And when you do that, it's really important that you don't feel constrained by your degree if you have a college degree. And you have to really, you know, you should feel free to pursue something new if you have to or if you want to, right? Action is really a cool way to break through a block. I think it applies to a lot of things in life. By doing something, we're creating momentum and energy that then really helps us break out of that mental block that we have as well. So a lot of times, for example, working out and exercising literally helps you remove some kind of a mental block you had, even though it was a mental block and not a physical block. Obviously, mind and body are completely connected. So taking different actions can also help us get unstuck from the crisis, the quarter life crisis or any kind of a mental block that we may experience. Honestly, that's actually one of the reasons that I'm currently making this video because I wanted to try creating YouTube videos or just connecting with more people in general and see how that makes me feel, whether I like it or not, see if that fulfills me. So that's like one thing that I'm trying to do. And I actually, I think I had this crisis on November 11th of last, not last year, of this year. So I want to see where I'm at one year from now, okay? And see if I'm closer to that life that I that I want for myself, to that dream that I have. Full-time artist, full-time creative, whatever it is, I want to be able to do my own thing. I wanna see like how close I am towards that dream by November of next year. So hopefully I will maybe make another video next year, kind of covering the same topic and see where I've gone since then. So I wanted to encourage you guys to do the same. If you have experienced a quarter life crisis in the past, if you're going through it right now, tell me one thing that you're going to do. Tell, you know, commit to one thing that you're going to try out that can help you go through this crisis and overcome it. Another thing that you can do to get through the crisis is to trust the discomfort and know you're normal for doing or feeling that. I think also the younger generations, we want more purpose and more meaning from our work. We want to find more fulfillment, I think, from work and we're not just happy with a paycheck. I think it's also, yeah, it tends to be true, I think, in younger generations as well. So just know that you're normal. Nothing is wrong with you. It's very common. Uh, a lot of people go through it, so I just don't want you guys to really beat yourself up for it or think that you're a loser or anything like that. Another thing, of course, that you can do that I'm doing right now is to share your experience with other people, you know, especially with supportive friends and family. You could even see a therapist and get professional help as well. Um, don't just, you know, ignore it and assume that it's going to go away. Maybe it will go away, but I think it's always really useful to connect with other people and talk about it so that you understand that you're not alone. Finally, incorporate self-care um, as you go through the crisis and be patient with yourself. Change in life um, takes a long time sometimes, not always, but most, mostly I would say big major changes, they can take years to happen and don't assume that everyone else has it figured out because they really don't. Continue to be patient with yourself and I do think that it's completely possible to survive a quarter life crisis in fact, I actually think that it could be the start of something really beautiful. Maybe you will use the discomfort and the anxiety and the difficult feelings that you have as a motivation to change your life. Maybe really go for that dream that you've always had that you maybe felt really afraid to verbalize or to share with the world. Maybe this will be a really great opportunity for you to kind of really step into it, right? So yeah, I think that it's completely possible to see a quarter life crisis as an opportunity to make a really positive change in your life. That's really all I have today. If you have experience with uh, going through a quarter life crisis, I would love to hear about it. If you are committing to some kind of an action to go through it, I want you to really leave it in the comment section and let me know and let other people know. What are you going to do today to get over or to go through this quarter life crisis? Are you going to try to learn more about yourself? Are you going to commit to draw every day for five to 10 minutes? 
every single morning you're gonna draw. Um, the Artist's Way is a really great uh, a book also. It's a whole nother topic, but yeah. What are you committing to do to feel more fulfilled in your life? I would love to read that in the comments, so please leave it in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video till the end. I will, you know, this is what I'm committing to is to really create more things and try to get, um, you know, get through the blocks that I have by taking more action. So um, my plan is to make at least one video per week, see where that leads me to, you know, in one year and see what happens, you know, and try other things. Because I think that's really how I'm going to find more joy in my life is to create share that with the world so yeah that's all i have thank you for watching if you enjoyed today's video please subscribe like this video share with other people and i will see you in my next one bye